Hello everybody, how's it going? How's you doing? There's only been two games that were played since the last time we met. Two very good results really. Away from home against Borussia Dortmund, we managed to get a nil-nil draw. It was a pretty even game and I think a point for both sides was pretty much deserved. Although if you are to look more deeply into the stats, maybe Dortmund could have got themselves the win in this one. Next up was a 3-0 home win against Manchester City. Now when Perez with a brace and Luis Montenegro came on and got himself a goal in the 84th minute. Uh, probably one of our most impressive wins this season, maybe the, not the most emphatic. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in 7th place on 19 points, 12 points behind Liverpool who are sitting at the top of the table. We've now closed the gap to 7 points against Manchester City who currently round out the top 4. In terms of our Champions League group, this is how it is sitting going into the final game of our group stage. Benfica sit top on eight points. Ourselves and Dortmund joint second level on points. But we do have the head-to-head -head record against them. So we are currently sitting in second. We have only won one game. <laughs> only won one game in five in this uh, group stage campaign. We've drew four. We're undefeated, which is impressive. But the fact that this is coming down to the last game leaves me very, very nervous. And that takes us to today's games. Home against bottom of the group stage, Monaco. And then away from home against Sheffield United in the Premier League. So a few of our injuries have returned. And uh, the only major concern now is Rasmus Nissen Christiansen, who will be missing for the vast majority of this season. Nasser Univar is also suspended for today's game. So this takes our team to looking like this. Jack Butland in goal, Bali Mumba, Perez, Badia Shiel and Miranda in the defence, Antonio and Pugier in the midfield, Rhys Nelson, Kiartia, Batista Maia and Avci leading the line. In terms of that right-hand side, I would really, really like to get Diawara some game time once he has fully returned. I'll maybe bring him on for the second half and uh, our bench is looking pretty strong outside of that. So let's get into today's, today's game. A win is pretty much needed, I would say. Benfica and Dortmund obviously play each other. Um, but let's say Dortmund win and we get beat. We're into the Europa League, uh, which wouldn't be ideal. I'd rather get into the knockout stages of the Champions League if we possibly can. But Monaco are going to be absolutely no mugs. They've got a decent side. Carrasco, Pellegrini is one of the best uh, young players on the game. At the very least, that's uh, actually really still only 21 years old in my save. And he looks pretty well-rounded. Gelson Martins. Uh, Daniela Rugani. Let's have a look at this guy. Quinos. We've probably looked at him before. He is a fantastic centre midfielder. And I have got him scouted uh, in the past. But obviously he's signed for Monaco this season from Velez. But let's get into the game. We know a win is needed. If we win, we are guaranteed to get through into the knockout stages. So let's see how we get on. First highlight of the game. Bali Mumba with the throw. And Chiarty picks it up on the edge of the box. It's a little bit fast this. I don't really mind it because we scored ourselves a goal. Oliver Batista Meyer with his fourth goal of the season. Bally Bumba doing excellent work down that right hand side, filling in for the injured Rasmus Nissen Christiansen. And absolutely superb stuff by us. Back post cross. Batista Meyer is there, rising above the uh, right back for Monaco. 12 minutes in, 1 0. Do actually want to keep an eye on the latest scores. And they've just scored, of course they have. Um, we want to see what's happening in the Benfica Dortmund game. It's currently 1 0 Dortmund away from home. And let's see this goal because I haven't seen it yet. Marcus Laurenti with his first goal of the season picks it up on the edge of the area. It's just a phenomenal strike. Jack Butland can do absolutely nothing about that. But disappointing to concede so soon after we've taken the lead. But there is a highlight straight from kickoff. We switch the plate to Batista Meyer on this left hand side. Is that Perez? That cannot be Perez. It's Reese Nelson. The highlight does continue with Monaco coming forward down this right-hand side. Keita Balde uh, cuts in from the right. We uh, get the challenge in, but Pellegrini keeps it alive. We win the ball in the centre. That's exactly what we want. And Chiarty bring the ball forward through the centre. Goes for goal. Terrible strike. Another highlight now. Monaco win the ball back in the final third for them. But Bally Mumba wins the ball back for us. Reese Nelson with the ball over the top. Avci is there. So Detton could have put us 2-1 up. I need to bring the leg table up. So as things stand currently, we have the head-to-head -head record on both Benfica and Dortmund. So with Benfica winning, we do go through with a draw. It still doesn't leave us in a particularly comfortable position, especially as Monaco are no mugs. But um, at least right now, we can be settled. Final highlight probably of the first half. It's us with a free kick on the halfway line. Marcos Antonio tries to switch the player 
It is cut out by Monaco. Reese Nelson now picking up the ball on the right hand side. He's cut in. He's on the edge. Batista Maia with a strike. It's blocked. And again, good save by the keeper. And it's cleared by the Monaco defence. Do we. Is this still going to continue? Pugier out left to. Uh, but I guess not. And now we have it then. Sunderland 1, Monaco 1. Not a bad first half by any means, but I am telling the boys I'm far from pleased. We've dominated the game, but all that matters is the goal line. And 1-1 uh, is not really good enough. So Detton Avci is having a poor game up top. We're going to get him off straight away for Lewis Montenegro uh, 60 minutes in. He's been doing, been pretty effective coming off the bench for us. So hopefully he can do something special in today's game. But we do have a highlight with 25 minutes to go. Chiarte pinches the ball from a Monaco throw in. And Montenegro is in behind. He's got a lot of work to do. He feeds it back to Batista Maia who's dispossessed in the box. I was half hoping for a penalty there once I seen the slide challenge coming in. But we do continue attack down the left hand side. Marcus Antonio picks it up. Miranda. Can he get the cross whipped in back post? He plays it back to Chiarte. Yeah, it's in. Montenegro, Batista Maia. Somebody. It's a, it's a simple save for Majeki. Pugier's not having the greatest game in the centre of the park. I'm tempted to get him off for of James Garner. And then moving Marcus Antonio into the centre of midfield role. With Garner coming in as the deep lion playmaker in the defensive area. I mean, as things stand, we're going through. We're not going to be lit group winners. It is looks like, as long as we don't concede, we'll be going through. We'll bring on Diawara for the last few minutes. Um, we will be going through second place. And now on Perez gets a goal from a corner. Doesn't look like it's offside. His fourth goal of the season. And that now sails our place through to the knockout rounds of the Champions League. But is it going to be top of the table or in second? We are gone top. Benfica and Dortmund are drawn. And... <laughs> As long as we don't concede, we're going to qualify as group winners with four draws. That's pretty impressive. James Garner, Antonio, 89 minutes gone. This is surely one of the final highlights of the game. Miranda through to Montenegro and that just sails the victory for us. His seventh goal of the season, considering he doesn't start that much, is incredibly impressive. Juan Miranda again, proven to be very, very useful on that left-hand side. And he is somebody who I would like to bring in permanently. Whether that is a possibility or not, it all depends on Barcelona. But um, happy with that 3-1. There is another highlight straight from kickoff. In this match, we have had six clear-cut chances and four half chances. It's very surprising that we're only 3-1 up. Jack Butland with a comfortable save there from a, a Carrasco shot. They do have a corner. It's going to be Golovin, the man to play it in. Hopefully, it's defended well by our lads. And it is. And now we have a boy, Sunderland 3 uh, Monaco won. Let's just get the confirmation that we have managed to finish top of our group. Let's have a quick check. And we have Benfica and Dortmund did end up finishing as a draw, I believe. 1-1. One, one. I mean, Guri getting a 90th minute equaliser for Benfica to tie things up after Adiemi had put them in from 10 minutes in. That means Dortmund are out. Ourselves and Benfica are through. Um, I have no idea when the draw is. Oh, we've got ages for the draw, so we're not seeing it this episode. You'll see it next episode. We are in 2022, which of course means that Qatar World Cup will be taking place after this Sheffield United game, I do believe. Yeah, so we'll play Sheffield United 5th of November, and then we don't return till the 28th of December against Villa and an unknown FA Cup third round. So we move on to the Sheffield United game. We have made a number of changes to our starting 11. Matthias Jakobsen comes in for the suspended Perez at centre-back. James Garner comes in defensive midfield and Marcos Antonio moves into the centre of midfield spot. Pugier, 92%, a little bit low for my liking and we've got the strength and depth now to be able to rotate our options. Diawara comes in at right wing. He will only be playing maybe the first half, maybe the first 60 minutes and then he will be coming out. Chiarte remains in for the injured Sergio Gomez. Uh, Nasi Univac returns to the starting 11 after his suspension and Montenegro gets a start up front against 18th placed Sheffield United. Now hopefully we've made quite a number of changes to the first 11 there. Rotation sometimes backfires in football manager. Hopefully not today. We are facing our former man Antonin who is getting the start in the Premier League. He's starting pretty well as well. Five goals in 11 games. So we'll have to keep an eye out for him. First highlight of the game comes 15 minutes in. We are on the attack down the left hand side. A poor pass by Miranda's gets to Chiarte. And he strikes. <laughs> I mean, and it probably need to tell Chiarte to shoot less often. He's, uh, I've definitely noticed in the games where he started that 
He takes shots pretty often and very rarely does it actually come off. As Guido Carrillo puts uh, Sheffield United 1 0 up, I'm not sure who the central defender was there. We'll take a look in the replay. But he's completely misjudged the flight of the ball. And we have made been made to pay the price. Izzo back to John Egan. Long ball over the top. It is, is that Perez? It's Jacobson. It's Jacobson. Perez has not played. He's suspended. Ah, oh, that's why we don't play Matthias Jacobson at centre back. Corner for us. Marcus Antonio is the man to play it. It finds its way to Lewis Montenegro, and we are only behind for five minutes in game. Sheffield United won, Sunderland won. Lewis Montenegro's eighth goal of the season, and we needed that. We needed that. I wasn't too pleased being 1 0 down. There is a highlight straight from kickoff. Hopefully, we're winning this ball and countering. But Sheffield United are currently in possession. But Bally Mumba does win the header. And maybe we are about to be set away. James Garner finds Montenegro. Another missed header by the centre half. The goalkeeper saves it. He keeps the ball in play. Izzo gets the challenge in. Another highlight now. 22 minutes in. Montenegro is bringing it forward once again. He's got the options on the left hand side. He does find Miranda. He's got five people in the box. He plays it in. It's cleared only as far as Bally Mumba. He's got decent crossing. We've seen it already in this episode. James Garner plays it in. It's cleared. Come on, lads. Nasser Univar tries to bring it down to Montenegro. It's cleared once again. It's a bit of pinball football. Uh, now the side really taking control, but it looks like maybe we are remaining a little bit more composed than Sheffield United. And we can build our attack once again. Marcus Antonio finds a Univar in the box. Montenegro! Maybe he needs to be starting. Sedetnav so likes to score the hat ricks, but Montenegro seems to be a little bit more consistent, finding the net more often than not. His ninth goal of the season now. I believe this is only like his fifth start in all competitions. Obviously, a lot of appearances coming off the bench as well. But um, he's doing fantastically. Oh, poor goal kick by Jack Butland. Finds Taylor on the left-hand side for United. It's played out Sander Burge. Jack Butland's just crap. He really is crap. And <laughs> I need to find someone. And I need to find someone quick. If he wasn't English, he'd already be out. To be quite honest with you. If he was a Colombian goalkeeper... I wouldn't be putting up with this. <laughs> Jack Butland costs us so many goals. Sander, it's a good strike. He gets his hand on it. It's a goal. It's, he should be saving that. Another highlight now. Sheffield United causing us all sorts of problems. Coming down this right-hand side now. Arias gets past his man. He's in the box. It's a good job he can't finish. And that is going to be it for half-time. Sheffield United 2, Sunderland 2. Disappointing. Hugely disappointing. And I'm going to tell the boys as much. Uh, let's hope that they can turn up for the second half 60 minutes gone we'll look to make some changes uh Diawara can come off we'll bring on reese nelson probably on that right hand side bally mumba again having a poor game at right back unfortunately for us he's basically our only option um i do want to get josh timing on for one miranda don't want uh, miranda to get too much uh, game time in case he gets an injury we'll save our final sub just in case half an hour to go Time is ticking away. We're going to go even more direct against Sheffield United. But it does look like it's going to end up being a 2-2 draw. We're going to bring on Abdul Qadir Omar in behind the striker. See if we can unlock this defence at all. But the second half hasn't had any highlights whatsoever. And our oh boys have just let it go. Sheffield United 2, Sunderland 2. Again, our league form is hugely disappointing. So after that game, we sit in sixth in the Premier League table. We are nine points off Champions League football, which is difficult. It's a bit of a pill to swallow, but we are doing well in the Champions League. We're qualified from our group. The board were only expecting us to be competitive, so that's not too bad. And we are matching the board's expectations in terms of the Premier League finish, which is top half. But we all know we want better than that. We want to be able to qualify for the Champions League again, if possible. And uh, maybe some major reinforcements need to happen during the January transfer period. We don't have that much money. Six and a half million quid. 30k per week in the wages. But right back is a major, major concern. Bally Mumba is just not up to the standard that is required. And uh, that's going to be the main area that I look to improve. Maybe goalkeeper. But again, goalkeeper is such a specialised position. I am struggling to find the right player. Who's actually better than Jack Butland in terms of his attributes. So when we return, it will be for the Villa and the FA Cup game. We've got the entirety of the Qatar World Cup to play through. I will show you that when it is available. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.